On the 30th of April, 1945, German Führer Adolf Hitler committed suicide in his bunker. Most people think Nazi Germany just died, and honestly, yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Whoa, who the fuck threw that bottle? Okay, okay, I'll elaborate. Jesus Christ, I'll elaborate. Hostile work environment, man. On the 30th of April, 1945, German Führer Adolf Hitler committed suicide in his bunker. Most people think Nazi Germany just died, but that is far from the truth. Hitler was unable to declare Himmler, or Göring, his originally planned successors, as his successors, due to charges of treason. To solve this problem, Hitler declared Grand Admiral Donitz in Plon as his successor to the titles of Reich President and Supreme Commander of the Wehrmacht. Plon? Plon. He also declared Joseph Goebbels as Reich Chancellor. However, Goebbels, never one to shy away from a party, committed suicide. Shortly later, Hitler's government fled to Donitz and Plon to go fight for the father. Oh wait, they all resigned. Donitz then went to this guy, and he became the new Reich Chancellor and formed a new government. And then everyone wanted to move because, as usual, the British were coming. First, the cabinet wanted to go to Prague to get closer to and negotiate with the Americans, but then Donitz was like, nah, we staying in Germany. So eventually they agreed on the obvious choice. A fucking naval academy. The cabinet chose the sports hall as a fitting office and everyone lived on a boat. I I'd like to point out, I'm not joking about any of this. Then everyone else moved to Flensburg, because why not? I mean, everyone else was having a party there. Then Donitz decided using genocidal maniacs in your cabinet was better than anyone well known for some fucking reason. I mean, he gave the title of Deputy of the Economics Ministry to a guy who did nothing but kill Jews in the Soviet Union. So basically, Donitz is as anti-Semitic as Hitler ever was and has no intention of surrender, so he surrounded himself with other racists in his new Flensburg government. Shifting our attention back to Himmler, Himmler really got a lucky break because Donitz really needed an army like the SS at this point in time. And then he kicked Himmler out and appointed some guy called Stuckart. Donitz wanted to make Erich von Manstein commander-in-chief, however for some reason he couldn't contact him before the 2nd of May. What's so important about the 2nd of May? For this reason, Mr. Cheerful, aka Wilhelm Keitel, got to keep his place and signed the Surrender of Berlin. Meanwhile, whilst the structure of the army was doing just fine, everything else in government was a fucking dumpster fire. Most of the government had decided an alpine resort was preferable to capture, so yeah, they're gone. So only the ministers, who, as explained, were essentially useless, were left. Plus, the government was all over the place of Hitler's death. Here, there, Bavaria, a fucking fiefdom in Berlin. So yeah, no one has any staff and it's a massive mess. Donitz really wanted to talk to his armies a bit about capitulation to the Americans and war with the Soviets. He evacuated a ton of helpless troops from the Baltic and then retreated from the Soviets, because that went well in the past. He then decided to stop burning everything. Too late for Poland though. Himmler was a bit of a problem with that big, sexy army, so Donitz promised Himmler a ton of false papers and dismissal. Okay boys. We're out. Himmler committed suicide not too long later. Meanwhile, around 10,000 victims of the Holocaust had been held captive on a flotilla in Lübeck with no food, water, or medical attention. The British Air Force bombed these ships, believing them to be preparing an evacuation for leading SS members. Around 7,000 captives drowned, most on the Cap Arcona.
On the 2nd of May, Donitz learned of the surrender of German forces in Italy. He decided that the situation in the West had gotten out of control, so he attempted to negotiate a peace deal with the British and Americans, splitting them from the Soviets. On the 3rd of May, he sent German Admiral Hans Georg von Friedberg to the British Marshal Bernard Montgomery in Lundberg. I want to propose my own ideas about surrender to the West and war with the Soviets. Can we get 10 days to dis- Nope! Britain time! The Germans surrendered all troops in Denmark, the Netherlands, and Northwest Germany. He also ceased all U-boat operations and proceeded to swiftly evacuate the rest of the troops from the Baltic. One ship refused to set sail, so they got the kind gift of a bullet. Southwest Germany also decided to join the bandwagon of surrender and gave up to the Americans. Then they tried to manipulate the Allies, causing confrontation between the Americans and Soviets by opening Prague to the Americans, surrendering and hoping they're anti-communist. Oh wait, there's been an uprising. And then the SS killed everyone and burnt everything. Well, this is awkward. And then the Soviets got into Prague anyway, so... Jesus Christ. Anyway, after those successes, Donitz told von Friedberg to go to Eisenhower and negotiate a general surrender to the Western Allies. It went roughly like this. Okay, so I'm thinking we surrender to you, and then you let us fight the Soviets. And then they turned around too. Fuck no, you gonna die, asshole! <laughs> Basically, the Germans have been stalling to get their troops to the west. Eisenhower saw this and threatened that if a total surrender was not negotiated, he would refuse access to the west to German troops and they would simply be shot. On the 8th of May, Marshal Zhukov signed the peace treaty on behalf of the USR and A.W. Tedder signed it on behalf of the British and Americans. Wilhelm Keitel signed on behalf of the state of Germany and the European theater of World War II had officially come to an end. The next day, on the 9th of May, Donitz issued orders to the German military about the surrender of all troops. I don't want to set the world on Throughout the world, throngs of people hail the end of the war in Europe. It is five years and more since Hitler marched into Poland. Years full of suffering and death and sacrifice. Now the war against Germany is won. The German state was no longer diplomatically recognized, and all state assets were under the Allied powers' control. All neutral powers also withdrew their diplomatic associations with the state. In fact, quite interestingly, the Flensburg government still thought it could remain as a provisional government. They met every day at 10 a.m. and attempted to initiate post-war repairs. However, as you'd expect, the Allies ignored them like a child in a playpen. The Allies did actually maintain the government for a brief time in order to act as a buffer state, restricting the Soviets' control over the Baltic and Denmark. However, on the 23rd of May, Donitz, von Friedberg, and Jodl were invited to the Patria and were informed of the dissolution of their government and their arrest. In fact, they were even searched for poison, no himmlering your way out this time. Von Friedberg still managed to commit suicide, however the others were captured and held until they could be forced to stand trial at Nuremberg. On the 5th of June, the Berlin Declaration was signed, officially placing the German territory under the occupation of the Allies. A flame in your heart